and I had this job interview down in Minneapolis. So I'm living in Winnipeg and Minneapolis, Minnesota is in the U.S. So I'm going to go from Canada to the U.S. And it's about, I, I think it's about a four hour drive. So I had this interview and it was early in the morning uh, on one day. I don't know what day it was. And about two days or a day or two days before I went, I remember I was at a swimming pool and I went to someone's house and they had a swimming pool and I'd never been in this house before and I was going to go for a swim. And I walk into their backyard and there's a pit bull in their backyard. And he took one look at me and he chased at me. He went run at me. This thing was huge. And I was like scared, like big time. This thing's big, right? And I go run and I jump in the pool, but I jumped in the shallow end. When oh, I no. jumped in the shallow end, I broke my heel. So oh, yeah. I got now a broken heel and I got the biggest opportunity of my life the next day. Okay, so I'm like, I, in my mind, and it really was a game changer for me. This, I'll tell you how it ends. But so I'm like, I got a broken heel. I am in excruciating pain. I got to drive, you know, for four hours. I got to go to this place. Um, it, was, it was in the late afternoon. I don't have time to get to the doctor. So I went to a walk-in clinic. And I'm going to uh, out myself now. I'm going to get arrested for this. I went to a walk-in clinic. <laughs> and uh, I walk in there. I'm sweating profusely because, I mean, I broke my heel. It hurts like I hell. cannot imagine what that even feels like. Horrible. So I walk in there. I'm like, I need to see a doctor. They said, well, I can't see a doctor, whatever. And I'm like, oh, man, okay, what am I going to do? And I looked over, and I could see their utility closet. And I saw crutches in there. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for them. So when the lady went and turned her back, I went in. I grabbed a pair of crutches. Okay, so I took these crutches. I went out. She didn't see me. went out, got the crutches. I threw them in my car. I drove that night to Minneapolis, stayed in a motel, woke up the next morning, was there on time for the interview at nine o'clock in the morning. I walked into that interview on crutches. I'm coming in, sweat's pouring off me. I look terrible. I dressed up, but it was just a, I mean, I was, it was a disaster. Oh. The interviewer stop guy looks at me, right? And he says, so, you know, what's wrong with you? I'm like, oh, I broke my heel. And he, I, and, he, and he looks at his watch and he goes, where'd you come from? I go, I came from Winnipeg. He's like, is that like four hours away in another country? I said, yeah. He looks at his watch. He goes, you're telling me you drove here, on, got a broke, had a broken heel, and you showed up here on time for your like nine o'clock interview. And he sat back in his chair and he looked at me and he went, wow. I knew I had the job. I was like, that's it. It was sealed. Because he was like, and I really think this is what's missing a lot of times with young people today. I wanted it so bad. Yeah. I could, you, it would have been a lake of fire and I would have swam through it. Man, I'm getting that. So I went and I got it. Right. So I got the job. And then, unfortunately, what happened was I got the job, but then it was in the United States, and they wouldn't allow me to oh get a, a, a work visa for it. So then they sent me to work for their subsidiary down in Toronto. No kidding. So that was started my real journey into, yeah. into like uh, fitness, because from there I started to go into more serious personal training because there was a lot more money in Toronto and a lot more opportunity. You have a, a long history of, of working with, with folks face-to-face uh, -face and, and having that personal touch, that personal, personal connection. But then you made that transition to being on, in the online world yeah. with, you know, with teaching and, 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 and fat loss offers and all kinds of things. So is that as gratifying or fulfilling for you? What, what are the feelings that you get from it that are maybe different from what, what you were getting you know, 15, 20 years ago? The, that's a good question. The... Um the feedback with one-on-one -on -one is more instantaneous, you know, and, and it's more uh, consistent because you're seeing a person, you know, three times or whatever times per week, and you get to really be a part of their life. You know a lot about them, and you can see the effects that you're having on, and how it bleeds over to different areas of their life, mm -hmm. which is really wonderful to see a person transform their body, but then you see how it changes their self-confidence, and all of a sudden now they're in a relationship or they're... Uh, more successful, they're chasing down goals and dreams because they believe in themselves, mm -hmm. and that's incredibly gratifying. Yeah. Um, you don't get that so much online, you know. Like online, the thing I like the most online are when I get the emails from people when they actually take a moment to to open themselves up a little bit and and share, you know, some positive, you know, give you some feedback because oftentimes you don't know much about what impact you're having, if any. But I have one email in my autoresponder that everybody gets no matter what you buy and it's on like day two um and it is i think it's called a letter to my unborn children and they were at the time they were unborn now they're born but you know it doesn't matter because right. the the message is 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 um it doesn't it doesn't matter on the timeline and that has these 20 life lessons that 
I kind of just jotted down over many, many years and just this little kind of document. And it gets the, it's by far the number one most commented on and, and positive response email I get. And it's the thing, actually, I, I, it's the thing I like. For me, it's one of the most important aspects of my online business, which is really weird. But I do think those 20 things that in there, that if you read them, and even if you didn't do any of the exercise, if you took some of that stuff to heart, you would absolutely change your life. Wow, that's awesome, dude. Because it does, it starts, it starts with, yeah. with that. I mean, it starts with what, what, how we think of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and if, if we're not in a good place with ourselves, we, we can't be much good to other people. No, so the, that the, building of confidence huge. is so huge. And how many times have you come across people who are highly successful uh, yeah. right, business-wise, financially, yeah. but they're an me absolute mess? Oh, yeah. As I got older, the, the, the emphasis on having big biceps and ripped abs, sure, those things are nice, whatever. But they're, they're so, it, it's, it's not what it's about, you know? That's just, a, that's just kind of a, a side effect. Yeah. That's one of the benefits, but it's not the benefit. You shouldn't be just chasing that. I know when you're young, you do, but when you get older, you do realize yeah. that, you know, this whole fitness thing is a foundation for other things much more important than just biceps and abs, yes. you know? Yes. Still love biceps and abs, by the way. Of course. Disclaimer. Because yeah. I'm a guy. Because we're guys. I never want to be a little girly and, man. And, and, uh, <laughs> I never want to be a little girly <laughs> man. And our, and our wives, I think, to some degree, that's always going to be something that they enjoy uh, from, from feeling uh, that... I that, hope so. That, that, protect, that protective uh, need that, that, that our wives have, right? They feel safe when they're with us. That's, that's a big component there. Uh, not just that our longevity is improved no. and, and uh, we're, we're, we're in good, in good health and, and, and still, uh, you know, look good in the mirror, but what are some of your, uh, because everybody has them, everybody has their own personal, like doctrine, you know, what yeah. they live by their, their own personal guidelines. What are some of your fitness and health absolutes? Three, it could be one thing, two things, three things that things that you'll never stray from or sacrifice regardless of, uh, where, you know, traveling, or, or, or anything? Well, I, I, one of the, probably the, one of the biggest mantras I have for myself personally, it's written in my gym, in my house. And it's just basically, it, it comes down to that. It, it says better yourself, you know, improve yourself that it's, it's all up to you, to me, you know, to myself, like it's up to you and it's up to me. Nobody has, uh, I am 100% responsible for everything I see when I look in the mirror. Mm. I don't pass the buck on anybody. It's nobody else's fault. Anything I see, when I look in the mirror, I have to own all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly. So I am responsible for the biceps, but I'm also responsible for the personality traits that I, maybe I don't like. You know, I'm, I have to own everything. And I don't think most people, or I don't, too few people, take ownership over their entire, like they're always blaming an outside source mm. for... It's always this person's fault. This is the reason why I can't do it. This is the reason why, you know, the relationship fell apart. This is, there's no ownership. Yep. You, the best thing you will ever do in your life is to own it all. And then just from that moment, from that place, stop blaming everybody. Take, even if it isn't all your fault, who gives a crap? Own it and move on and do better. Better yourself. Take full responsibility for who you are, you know, and what you're doing in your life. Mm. It's, I, I'm, you know, some of the, 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 the talk today, uh, it just seems so weak to me. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, you are responsible. There are no excuses. You're fat. All right. Own it. Now just do something about it. That, that concept of balance off is two things, right? They got like on a teeter totter. Yeah. Well, life is a lot more than two things. Yeah, it is. So what, what I do, and I'm just fortunate because my wife understands and supports me and I, you know, she knows my personality. So I like to, when I've got something I want to achieve, I, it, I becomes an obsession so that I can get it done. Um, and I hold myself to a very high standard in terms of, uh, accountability with, with time and, and projects being finished because I'm self-employed, nothing happens and no one cares if I do it or not. It doesn't no. matter. I don't, you said, you mentioned you had accountability from your team and that's awesome. But a lot of people don't have a team. Yeah. So you have to find the accountability yourself. Mm. You have to hold yourself accountable. And if you can't be accountable to yourself, 
I think you got to check yourself. You really got to realize that you have to stop procrastinating and you have to be harder on yourself. You have, to, I have conversations with myself all the time that are not very nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll have my nice time when I'll think to myself every now and then I'll think, Oh, that was great way to go, man. You, that, you nailed it. You did good. But most of my conversations with myself are kicking myself in the ass. I'm yeah. saying, Bruce, get going. Bruce, don't screw this up. Come on. You can do this. This guy did it. Why can't you do it? Stop making excuses. So I'm very hard on myself. My wife says I'm way too hard on myself. However, that being said, it has worked for me and I will continue to do it because it has worked. So I think people have to really hold yourself accountable. Stop making excuses. Mm. You know, you know what you want. Now just do whatever it takes to get it. You have to just do those things and stop doing the things that are taking you away from it. So if you want to have, you know, six pack abs or whatever, you know, you can't eat all that stuff that you want to eat. Just suck it up. You can't eat it. You know, you just have to really have that determination. When I was in bodybuilding, like getting into competition type shape, my friends used to always come around with junk food and they would just try to taunt me. You know, I loved it. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah. Eat the cake right there. You fat. <laughs> yeah. See these abs? Check it out. Check it out. I got veins in my abs. Yeah. That's you know, great. how do you like that? That's great. So it, it just, you have to develop that strength and you can develop it. It's oh, like yeah. a muscle, you know, it's, but anyways, my wife has been a huge part of, I think, of, of helping me to, she allows me to be able to do the things that I want to do to be successful, to provide for my family. Um, and that's a great thing. And that's a big part of it. You need a support system that can allow that. Huge. And that's a blessing. Yeah. Like, really. So I give props to that.